Are politicians arguing over nonsense? And are media still scaring Manitobans? This and more on the Manitoba Freethinker Podcast. Welcome back to another show, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day as always. Quick question. Do you guys think that the next set of uh, openings are going to be the next phase of the 4321 Great Summer Reopen Plan? Or do you think that Manitoba is just going to follow suit with some other jurisdictions and completely back out? And uh, have Manitoba Health move to giving out health advice instead of health restrictions. I personally think that we are just going to continue to move down the 4321 path. Um, We do have high vaccination rates. But um, regardless, Manitoba is moving so slow. I just don't see us. um, I don't see Manitoba Health moving to giving health advice and not restrictions. Even though Dr. Rusin keeps talking about it over and over, I just don't see it happening um, next week. But either way, Manitoba, let me know what you think is going to happen. Do you think we're going to completely open up or do you think we're just going to move to the next phase? Let me know in the comments below. All right, Manitoba. I don't know what is going on here in Manitoba. Um, It seems like up is down. I don't know if it's like this in other provinces, but Manitoba definitely seems backwards. Either that or I'm just completely out of the loop. I don't know. Maybe I'm the crazy one, Um, but we have some of the lowest test positivity rates. uh, Sorry. We have some of the lowest test positivity rates, some of the lowest case counts, reported deaths throughout Canada, and yet we're still locked down with some of the harshest restrictions. And our media is still scared of the little opening up that we have done so far. So, like our province continues to burn out of control. Farmers are struggling like never before. There's droughts. Some jurisdictions keep implementing states of emergencies. And meanwhile, our political class is either arguing with itself over statements Pallister made back at the beginning of July about the statues being toppled at the ledge, or they're busy congratulating themselves for some bullshit job they think they've done making downtown safer, or making Winnipeggers or Manitobas in general think that downtown is any safer than it was a year ago. So, like, it's just ridiculous what we're dealing with here. But before I do get into these stories, I want to just let you know that last show I gave a shout-out to Maxime Bernier who is due in a Manitoba court on the 27th, uh, stemming from his arrest in Manitoba for holding an anti-lockdown rally uh, during his Mad Max tour. Just letting you guys know that his court date has been pushed back till uh, sometime in early August. So there's no actual update to give you. Um, Like I said, he didn't go to court. And the second shout out I gave was to the Manitobans who were planning on going to the Human Rights Museum and they were going to try and get in without any vaccination and they went and no shocker to anyone, they were denied entry. So I encourage all you guys to go check out some of their videos on Facebook, YouTube, uh, go support them. Um, Like everyone knew what the outcome was going to be, but it is good to see that there are a lot of Manitobans who are just fed up with these outdated restrictions and lockdowns. And a lot of Manitobans just don't want to see a two-class system. They don't want to have to show proof of vaccination just to gain entry into a business in Manitoba. So, and as far as I'm aware, there was no, no one got into any legal trouble. So that's at least one positive. But, um, yeah, they were denied entry like everyone predicted. Okay, Manitoba, as much as I do love to see Pallister in the hot seat, since I feel that he has failed Manitoba and he's betrayed his values, his beliefs, in, I guess, an attempt to please the left, I don't know, but I think he betrayed the people that voted for him. So I like him 
fucking squirming and him being in the hot seat. But I will say I don't agree with why he's getting all the flack. And it's stemming from his comments made back at the beginning of July, like I said, about the statues. Um, I'm going to play you a clip of him talking about like what it has everyone so angered. And this is what keeps um, getting all his cabinet members to step down and make comments uh, going against Pallister. But um, never mind the, uh, you know, the opposition members and the media who are just eating this up. But it's actually having an effect, an effect in his own cabinet. But uh, here, here's the clip. I want to make some comments in respect of the events of Canada Day. Um, we all understand and we should understand that uh, tearing down is a lot simpler than building up. But building up is what we have to dedicate ourselves to. And I believe that Canada has been and will always be, I hope, a nation that is an example to those around the world of our dedication to building, to building something better. We are not a perfect country but we're a lot closer than a lot of other countries to being perfect. And we need to dedicate ourselves to that construction project that is Canada. I would say to those who are cho choosing uh, to tear down right now, rather than to build up, that that is the wrong choice. And I would say to them, let us build together. That is the right choice. Throughout our country's history, well before we were acknowledged as a country, uh, we were a home of hope to people from around the world who came from long distances away to uh, pursue a better life for themselves, for their families. And we continue to be that, that, that beacon of light for people from around the world. We must be that beacon of light for our indigenous people in this country as well. For too long that has not been the case. The people who came here to this country uh, before it was a country and since didn't come here to destroy anything. They came here to build. They came to build better. To build, they did. And they built farms. And they built businesses. And they built communities and churches too. And they built these things for themselves and for one another, and they built them with dedication and with pride. And so we must dedicate ourselves to building as well, and yet again. Because what these people have done, our ancestors, is they've given us a heritage. And heritage is a complicated thing. There are good and bad aspects to Canada's heritage, as there are to any country's heritage. We've had ups and downs in our country. We've had good times, and we've had bad moments. And Canada Day was one of those bad moments. So I just want to point out that at no point did he mention residential schools. So he wasn't talking about that. He was referring to the criminals that were tearing down the statues. It's vandalism. It's a crime. I support them being arrested and fined or whatever um, because they're committing a crime. But he was not talking about anything to do with the residential schools. So I don't understand why his own cabinet are um, coming out against him. I like. <laughs> It makes zero sense. It just like they're just it just shows these politicians have zero spine. But um, I just find it funny that this is what the media and uh, the like I said, his own members have such a problem with that clip that like that those statements. Um, according to them, like this is I guess is more important than our freedoms and our charter rights. More important than all the fires that are burning throughout Manitoba. You know what I mean? More important than our farmers who are struggling. So this is what they're, they're complaining about. It's, it's unfucking real. 
And meanwhile, the other half of our local politicians are patting themselves on, ba- on their back for what they call a success in reference to the Downtown Community Safety Partnership, or the DCSP. Justice uh, Minister Cameron Friesen held a press conference a couple days ago with some other local officials in basically which has amounted to a big old circle jerk complimenting each other on a job well done. Meanwhile, no Winnipegger or Manitoba feels any safer downtown than a year ago. Um, I would say it's getting worse. You know, you better go put your stab vest on if you want to go downtown. But the Manitoba government invested $5 million into the DCSP which has now fully immobilized the MAC 24-7, which stands for Mobile Mobile Assist and Connect Team. They will work in concert with the Connect and Community Outreach Outreach Adversary Resource Team. So MAC 24-7 members perform social needs assessments and engage other agencies and services, including the core team as required. Supporting the safety and wellness of those in the downtown area, members can also administer advanced first aid for non-emergency situations to allow more effective and timely response and alleviate some of the current demands on 911 and police, fire, and paramedic services. Together, the three teams work to ensure appropriate assessment and management of calls and interactions to deliver services best suited to the nature of the situation. A key facet of affecting uh, long-term change for individuals and the entire downtown community. Uh, The DCSP teams have had a significant impact in the core over the past year, with over 2,000 well-being checks, over 100 medical assistant events, more than 450 housing referrals, over 280 case management meetings, over 220 courtesy self-walks, sorry, courtesy safe walks, and providing assistance to more than 60 individuals in obtaining identification documentation. Downtown Community Safety Partnership team also recently launched a website and downtown safety app, which features resources to enhance personal safety while in the downtown area, including safety contact numbers for various downtown organizations, location identification services, maps, and guides to help navigate downtown services and amenities, Users can access FriendWalk, which allows them to send their location to a friend so they can watch them walk to their destination in real time, and Courtesy Walk, which contacts a Connect team member who can accompany users to the car, bus stop, or office. So that's what uh, the DCSP does, and I would like to say that I do agree with the work the DCSP is doing downtown. Uh, The point I'm trying to make is the politicians are celebrating a job well done when it's far from that. They're claiming this as a win. In reality, this is the very least they could do. Uh, We need more of a police presence. We need police out of their cars, walking and cycling and patrolling the worst areas. And I mean, obviously, we need a harsher deterrent, meaning harsher punishments for violent crimes. But in Canada, that's fucking probably not going to happen. But for them to act like downtown Winnipeg is any more safe than a year ago is completely a joke. So like I said, I agree with everything the DCSP is doing. I don't think it's worth $5 million of taxpayer money. Probably could have been spent way better. But... um Like I said, the fact that they're celebrating this as a win is a complete joke when, I mean, day after day is nothing but violent crimes. So So while our politicians are arguing amongst themselves, well, half of them are, and the other half is congratulating themselves on a shit job they think they've accomplished, Our media is still working strong to do their best um, to still scare Manitobans. They're still coming out with articles titled from like CBC News titled, It's Not Safe to Jump In Just Yet. Manitoba Wades Slowly Into Post-Pandemic Waters. Or articles coming out from the free press have talked about one size should not fit all. 
so like the the media still continues to fight the opening of Manitoba. And just remember that all these politicians and all of these so-called reporters have not lost a dime in pay yet. Yet they demand you to lose your source, uh, source of income and they want to call your way of uh, feeding your family non-essential. Like these people are sick in the head. As of the time of recording, uh, 79.3% of Manitobans age 12 and up have gotten their first shot, and 68.6% of Manitobans age 12 and up have gotten their second shot. Test positivity rate is like 25 provincially, 1.3% in Winnipeg, um, and yet still our media is against opening up. With all these numbers being so, like our vaccine numbers being so high, compared with other provinces. Our media is now pinpointing certain regions and jurisdictions with low numbers in trying to either shame them or try to punish them and demand that the let-up of restrictions be regional instead of provincial. So like I said, these people are sick. They keep just moving the ball. If they couldn't find a jurisdiction with no numbers, they would just find another metric to go by and scare Manitobans and keep fighting up the opening of uh, Manitoba. So, like, it's outrageous. We are already leading Canada, so now they're going to pinpoint jurisdictions with low vaccine uptake and demand that they stay locked down. It, they're a joke. But to our media's delight, our province continues to move forward with the two-class system and the, the demanding of you to show proof of vaccination in order to attend events throughout Manitoba and, you know, just uh, the people who haven't been vaccinated just aren't going to have the same rights and freedoms to those Manitobans who are fully uh, immunized. So with the Bombers going ahead on their August 5th game, only allowing fully vaccinated Manitobans to attend, um, arresting ordinary Manitobans who write Facebook posts against this move. <laughs> Shout out to P Patrick Allard. Um, the Gold Eyes are now coming back to Manitoba to finish off their season, only allowing fully immunized fans. Same with soccer. And now Manitoba is hosting two massive concerts at the end of August, celebrating Manitoba's 150th birthday that was postponed due to COVID. They will be hosting these events at the Gold Ice Stadium and, once again, will only be available to Manitobans who are fully immunized. So this only further divides Manitobans and it just pits Manitobans against Manitobans. It's not going to get people who don't want to be vaccinated vaccinated. It's just obvious. The demonstration at the Human Rights Museum proved this. It's just going to further anger Manitobans. It doesn't matter what kind of carrot you try and dangle, whether it's a lottery, sports games, and now concerts. It's not going to change people's minds. It's only going to push Manitobans to their breaking point. So, enough of the talk about a post-pandemic Manitoba already. With our numbers, Manitoba Health should move immediately to just giving out advice and not restrictions. Um, you have given enough of a warning to our mainstream media and to our scared population that they are going to have to be responsible for themselves. And they're no longer going to be able to rely on the government to tell them what to do. They're going to have to be adults again. So, like, remember, according to Dr. Rusin now, this is a disease of the unvaccinated. So, to all the people who are vaccinated, and still demanding the lockdowns and restrictions to continue, they have nothing to worry about. And for all the Manitobans who aren't vaccinated, we're not worried about it either. So after 17 months of what was supposed to be three weeks, let's just open the fuck up already, Manitoba. This is getting ridiculous. Summer is going to be over before we get to the summer reopening plan. And then, like I said a couple of shows ago, it's going to be just in time for the, in quotes, fourth wave. But Manitoba, like I said, let me know what you guys think about all this. I just, I'm lost. I, like I said, up is down. Manitoba's run by 
fucking spineless cowards, in my opinion. And when I harp on Pallister, it's very clear to me that shit could be a lot worse, meaning if the NDP was in charge or the liberals were in charge, I feel we would be in a way worse position. But I will continue to harp on Pallister because he basically betrayed his voters. And um, yeah, he should definitely step down. He's just running the conservatives into the mud. But either way, Manitoba, like I said, I want to know what you guys think about our current situation just as a whole. Um, Let me know what you think about the direction Manitoba is going and uh, continuing to go down. But Manitoba, thank you so much for tuning in to another show. I want to, I really do appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff that helps out the show. I want to say a special shout out to a couple of people on Twitter who did uh, retweet and share my episode. And um, yeah, so thank you very much. It really helps. But uh, you can follow me at Twitter at MB Freethinker or Facebook is uh, Manitoba Freethinker. And you can go to my website, www.mbfreethinker.wordpress.com. And you can get all my other links to all the latest shows. Other than that, I'm on most podcast platforms. Um, But yeah, check me out. Um, Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will catch you guys in a couple days. Bye.